I want to have to kill you, Mailer. With what? My favorite movies as a child were Red River, The Ghost Goes West, and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. That's two 40s westerns, the first directed by Howard Hawks, the second by John Ford, both starring John Wayne, and a 30s satirical ghost comedy set in Scotland, written by an American, Robert E. Sherwood, produced by a Hungarian for an English company, Alex Corda, for London films, directed by a Frenchman, René Clair, starring an Englishman, Robert Donat. As a kid, this was my favorite scene in the movies, when the ghost gets his revenge. Now, touch the floor with your nose. By the time I was 10, I'd seen each of those pictures numerous times, but never was really aware of who directed them, nor even that such a person was necessary. Well, today, close to 40 years later, there's still movies I'm fond of, but could I call them favorites now? Well, actually, these days I don't have favorite movies so much as favorite directors, picture makers in whose company I really enjoy being. And if they're joined by stars I especially like, well, it's all to the better. Anyway, not everything changes. Ford and Hawks are still among my favorites, and so is another Frenchman, Jean Renoir. The Westerns have changed, if not the directors, and not the star. John Wayne is in both of these, too. My favorite Hawks Wayne picture these days is Rio Bravo, released in 1959. My favorite Ford Wayne Western is The Searchers, released in 1956. Well, we'll find him in the end, I promise you. We'll find him. Just as sure as the turning of the earth. Of the Frenchman's films, most of my favorite Jean Renoir pictures aren't available, but two of them are. The Grand Illusion, his still extraordinarily relevant World War I pacifist film, and The Rules of the Game, the most daring and original romantic comedy ever made, and the only one with a tragic ending, but then comedy used to stand for any dramatic presentation, happy ending or not. Now, of course, Ford and Hawks didn't just direct westerns any more than Renoir only did black and white movies in French, but his English language color films aren't available yet, and neither is Ford's How Green Was My Valley, one of my particular favorites, and neither is Hawks's Bringing Up Baby, high among my favorite comedies. But another favorite Hawks comedy, His Girl Friday, with the same star, Cary Grant, is available, if not the best print. And so is one of my favorite Ford comedies, The Quiet Man, starring John Wayne, Maureen O'Hara, and Ireland. When I was 16, my perception of movies was changed dramatically by Orson Welles' first film, Citizen Kane, which was 14 years old at that time, the mid-50s. It was the first time I remember consciously realizing that an overwhelming presence was possible to exist behind the camera, and, of course, Wells quickly became a favorite presence for me, from Kane through his dark 50s thriller, Touch of Evil, co-starring Charlton Heston and Janet Leigh. Now available in the uncut version, Wells did not live to see released. I'll go sober. What else is there to think about, except my job? Which Wells picture is favored is hard to narrow down, and he only made about 15 films. How much tougher with a director like Ford, who did 140? But here's a few other picture makers I admire, whose company I really enjoy, about whom you've already heard from me, and will probably hear a little more. There's the divine German, Ernst Lubitsch, who made my favorite musical, The Merry Widow, which isn't available. But this one is one of my favorite comedies of his, The Shop Around the Corner, starring Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan. Another Jimmy Stewart picture, Rear Window, can represent all the many ones I'm fond of, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And there's still Preston Sturgis to mention, the extraordinary comedy writer-director represented here by the Lady Eve, starring Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck. And I still haven't mentioned Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, D.W. Griffith, Joseph von Sternberg, George Cukor, or several others, or this, among my favorite comedies, Leo McCarry's The Awful Truth, starring Cary Grant, Irene Dunn, and Ralph Bellamy. Released 51 years ago and fresher than ever. Oh, 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 oh. 